My name's Shaquan, but a lot of people know me by my other name, Mad Skills. I'm an MC. My name is Mad Skills. Now let's make some noise. I'm a DJ. Oh, yeah. I'm a ghostwriter for some of your favorite rappers. I'm not about to tell you who, though. Oh. But most importantly, I'm a hip hop enthusiast. Hip hop confessions is raw, unfiltered conversations with my friends revealing things that they didn't like, never knew about, I don't know, or never got into about hip hop culture. So sit back. Oh, come on, y'all. Turn up the volume. Hip hop. And listen to hip hop confessions. Because everybody's got one. Here's a little story that must be told. And it goes a little something like this. this, this. Yo, what's up, world? It's your boy, Mad Skills, and we are back. This is my podcast, Hip Hop Confessions, where I give my friends and industry, you know, homies, you know, all of my folks, and I get them to reveal something hip hop related, an unpopular opinion or a story or something that they've never told anybody. This week's guest, I got one of my guys, man. I haven't seen this guy in years, but we, we, we traveled in a lot of the same circles, man. Big fan of him as a as a as an MC and definitely as a producer because the first time I heard of him he was rapping you know what I'm saying definitely an inspiring from where he came from to what he did I'm I'm gonna let him get into all of that but y'all already know what it is man my guy my brother Ski Beats on Hip Hop Confessions what's good bro Skills what up baby good to see you man good to see you oh Let's man show. it's it's been a minute man Jesus yes sir. Like how you shit. been though? How you been? You been holding oh, up listen. during all this crazy shit? Yeah, man. You know I can't complain, man. You know, and if I did, it wouldn't change shit. You know what I mean? So that's right. That's right. Keep it pushing, man. But damn, I ain't seen you since. Wow, it's been a minute, man. I just wanted to thank you for even pulling up. Oh man, yeah. Come on, when 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 your partner hit me and said, "Yo, skills want to chop it up with you," I'm like, "Hell yeah, I got to." That's my boy. I ain't seen him in like forever since one of those new music seminar type of things oh, back man, in NY. Like- 30 years. 30 years, bro. That was 93. That that was the last music. So that was the last. The one I was in was the last one I was in when I battled Super Nat. Right, you know right. And, um, yep. and I came in second. And uh, that was, yeah, that was the, 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 the one where I remember coming outside. And I've told this story a few times and seeing a young hoe demolishing yep. niggas. <laughs> like, demolishing <laughs> niggas. And that that shit was in New York, and it was all of the you know all of the, the the heavyweights at the time was at the seminar. That was that's probably how I got on because everybody that I had sent the tape to was kind of in the same room, so they got a chance to see me. But I remember seeing shit, bro. I remember seeing signed platinum artists looking at that cipher, hearing that nigga, yeah, and man. like, yeah, nah, I don't want no parts of this nigga. I'm getting straight in the car service, <laughs> like. I remember that vividly. Like that's one of my vivid memories. I'm like, oh shit. So damn LL didn't stay. Oh shit. Mm-hmm. You know Do- Dos Effects didn't stay. Like niggas was out when they heard him going in. Yo, Jay was a terror back then. You know, he was terrorizing the scene, bro. He was running him and Source Money and Jazz Zo was running up on niggas battling live. I remember them battling Fife, rest in peace. I remember the LL battle, the DMX battle. I was there for all of those battles. Big L battle. I was there for all of that. Wow. He was rocking That's them, bro. Crazy, <laughs> man. Yeah. Listen, man. Shout out to, you know, shout out to Hova still doing his thing, man. It's the great Jay Z. So listen, man, um, you know, a little bit of your background, because I had somebody um, you know, on, on one of the other podcasts that me and him were from the same city in North Carolina. And mm-hmm. um, you know, I grew up in North Carolina. So Tell us about your North Carolina beginnings, because you from- uh, Greensboro. Greensboro. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. My man Gav be running through there a lot. My man Gav be up there. Okay, okay, yep. Man, you know, I started in Greensboro, man. I was with a uh, rap group, local rap group called the Busy Boys, and um, that's how everything got started for me. You know, when we did, when we formed that group, we put out a couple of records, and one of the records actually- Made it to what Hot ninety seven and BLS and all that shit. Mister Magic, Red Alert, everybody was playing it, mm-hmm. and from that moment, that's what kind of led me to move up top and to you know to pursue my career. You know what I mean? And but what, it all what started year, back what home. What year was this? This might have been. This had to be early nineties, right? This was 89, 90, 90, 89, 90. Yeah. And so by the time I had saw you, I remember seeing uh, the video for "Can I Get Open." Yeah. Right. And uh. And I remember somebody saying, like, yo, that like that that first kid, like, yo, he he from NC, he from he from round the way. I'm like, who? 
They're like, yo, the kid that was doing the, you know what I'm saying, the ill, we were scratching with his vocals. He was like, I was like, yo, he from North Carolina. He's like, yo, bro, I'm telling you, he from North Carolina. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. Like, and I'm still in North Carolina trying to figure a way to get out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. And I, I saw that video and I was like, they, you know, I, we didn't, you was from a different city. I was in Fayetteville. But, um, you know, it wasn't too many cats that you was going to ever see on TV from North Carolina in those days. Yeah, but I definitely sure. remembered you always. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yeah, so, okay, so you moved to New York. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, you move up top, and 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 I the next time I remember uh, us being kind of in the same circles was through Clark Kent because you know this the new music seminar the Superman battle was Clark Kent's John I lost yeah. Clark like yo just pull up to the crib I'm gonna do I'm gonna help you with your demo and I'm like I he like I like you I think you dope like you know what I'm saying just I know you're in VA like yo pull up come to the crib we we knock some joints out so yeah. I would come to the crib. Told this story before and and talk shit about Jay Z in Clark <laughs> Kent's house until Clark Kent got tired of it, cause I'm still trying to prove myself to Clark, and and after a while Clark was like, yo yo like calm down bro like listen Jay Z's the Jesus Christ of rap like don't stop disrespecting Jay like <laughs> you know what I'm saying he checked me but it yeah. took him a second to check me he would play me a couple of songs you know with with your group you know what I'm saying and I was just like oh I was like but I didn't make the connection. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because it won't, you know, one of videos then, like these are just demos y'all had cut. Mm-hmm. And Clark just playing me joints to, to broadcast his beats. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the OG Clark Kent. So you go to New York. How yeah. does how does how does that connection bridge between you and what you ended up doing with, you know what I'm saying, original flavor and then to Jay-Z? Wow. So Clark, Clark was the uh common denominator, bro. When I was in North Carolina first. We used to, you know, my group, we used to open up for all the major acts that came from New York. And Clark was DJing for Dana and Dane. Mm. And so Clark was like, hey, you know, he's seen us so many times. He was like, hey, if you guys are ever in New York, you know, look me up. So when I finally moved to New York, I hit Clark at the perfect time. That's when he was a and r at Atlantic. So I yes. gave him a demo tape. He liked it. And boom, that's how Original Flavor got signed. And um, So Clark signed y'all to Atlantic? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I Clark didn't know was that. the connection for everything, man. Clark hooked me up with Jay, hooked me up with Dame. Every, matter of fact, the day I signed my contract up at Atlantic Records, Dame Dash was sitting right there in the in the uh, in the um the office seat, and Clark was like, "Hey, I want you to meet Dame Dash. He loves your music. He wants to manage you." And I was like, "Yo, let's and go. I just want to get this deal. Let's rock. You know what I mean?" Right. Mm-hmm. That's dope, man. Clark is. Clark is the common denominator in so many people's stories just because yeah. he was he was talented and he saw things in people that we might not have seen in ourselves and yeah. he was good at connecting dots. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like knowing like, yo, you should rock with, yo, I know somebody I want you to meet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. yo, yo, I got a homie that does da 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 da. Like, yo, you should meet him. Like, y'all, y'all niggas would the same way, you know, he connected Big and Jay and you know what I'm saying? Like Dame and you, like. Shout out to the OG Clark Kent, man. Yes, one sir. of the one of the most genuine people in the game, and you don't really run into people like him too often, man. Definitely. Changed changed a lot of our lives. Definitely, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So you, all right? So the original flavor, you do the original. Did y'all ever make an album, or was it just like a single with with Atlantic? Nah, we had two albums, and it was two different original flavors. When we when the original flavor first came out, I was with this kid named Suave. And then, you know, we had our little whatever, whatever. And mm-hmm. then the second um, reenactment of Original Flavor, I was with Tone Hooker. And that's, you know, people and know Chubby that Chubb. Original Flavor. Yeah, Chubby Chubb. Yeah. And um, But yeah, we had two albums. And, uh, you know, they both went like double wood, but it was fun. I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, man, listen, bro. Like, in, in those days, man, you know, you had to get your feet wet and, yeah. and realize what your, what your sound was and, and how you was going to move it. You know, so from that you you ended up producing on one of the most classic albums of all time. You know what I'm saying? I I would be remiss not to talk about this album and and how it how it fucking impacted the culture and me. But you were on reasonable doubt. Like how many you had like four or five joints on there, right? Like Yeah, yeah. Like five tell, joints, I think. All right, so all right, let me ask y'all this. Cause you know, I, I I asked Clark this when I had him on the on the on the podcast, and me being a rapper, you know, 
it, it comes this point in time when, you know, we all in ciphers, we all spitting, we all hearing other rappers and, you know, steel sharp and steel. Mm -hmm. But when did you realize that Jay-Z was special as far as the MC concerned? When did, when did you catch that, like, oh, this guy different? Crazy that you asked me that. Um, Clark had brought Jay-Z up to one of um, our video shoots. I think we were shooting uh, Here We Go. And um, he wanted Dame to meet Jay because, you know, he wanted Dame to manage Jay. And um, after the video shoot, Jay-Z, Sauce Money, Jazzo, they was all there, Clark. Hey, this is Dame Dash. Yo, spit something for him. And when I heard him rap that day, that moment, that's when I knew I wasn't going to rap no more. I'm like, <laughs> yo, this boy right here is, you know, he was bananas. I mean, the, the timing. It's like they like comedians. You know, they timing is so perfect. It just hits you perfect. When them punchlines hit, you know what I mean? I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, these, these niggas is crazy. And I just knew I wanted to like, 100% just go ahead and just get in my production bag because I'm never going to be as nice as this dude. So let me get in my production bag and help him write a story, you know, with the, with the music. But I knew that moment when, I, when, he, when him and Sauce and him, all of them. Right. Sauce, but Sauce nice. should have been, Sauce you know. Sauce was nasty. What? Sauce, Sauce was, was out of control, bro. Yes, yeah, Man, big shout out to Sauce saying? Money, yeah, man. That's Sauce my guy, money, too. He, he's yeah, wild. Sauce motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Jazzo like, too, man. You know, Jazzo was a king. You know, he was the yeah. father of both them dudes. You know what I mean? Yeah. They yeah, just had that me, skill. You know, huh? like I said, when I would go to Clark's crib, um, you know, I, like I said, I was trying to, I came in second in the battle, so I took an L, but this guy has taken an interest in me and has let me come to his house and work and stay. And I'm still trying to prove to him that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm worthy of this. So I'm talking cash shit, man. Yo, Clark, put me in the room. Because I know he moving around with mad rappers. Uh, and so I'm like, yo, put me in the room with anybody, Clark. I, yo, I, I'll demolish cash. So he like, yo, yeah, I got you. Like, da, 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 da. Like, so I'm, I'm an eager MC trying to prove myself. And he, was, mm -hmm. he would play me these songs by Jay. Like songs, to the, like I said, to this day, I've said this before, to this day, I've still never heard songs that were... were were as impactful and great as he was. And I remember Clark played me a song called What's in a Name. Yo. And I heard that record and he was taking everybody's names and flipping them. And I remember one of the lines he was like, he said, oh Lord, he said, he said, I Ella when I when I bust text under pressure. I went to the head of the class, got an A plus from the large professor. Like, and I was like, yo, <laughs> I was like, this nigga is, and it, it, it was one of the illest songs. And, and fast forward, this is probably my hip hop confession for the episode. Fast forward to, to years later, right? I'm in the, I'm in the record plant in LA. And um, this might've been 2015, 2016, something like that. And I'm working with, um, Another another artist at the time, and I go to the I go to the bathroom, and I see Jay Z in the little game room. You know that little game room they got right there. I see Jay Z in the right in the game room playing Pac Man, just by himself. I go to the bathroom. I walk past him. I'm like, damn, was that whole? You know, so I'm in the bathroom like washing my hands. He's like, damn, was that fucking Jay? You know what I'm saying? And this, he was working on, I think him and his wife were working on the Carter album, the, the joint album that they did. Right. And I come back out and I look and I'm like, oh shit, it's Jay. And you know, I know, I, I know Jay, so I walk in and shit. I'm like, I'm like, oh. And he turned around, he like, oh shit, what's up? Like, what up, Skills? I'm like, yo, what's up? I said, yo, what's up, man? How you been? He said, oh man, life is good, man, can't complain. But he's still playing Pac Man. Right? He kind of looking at me, he kind of looking at Pac-Man and shit. And um, I said, yo, man, I said, I ain't going to hold you. I said, I, I know you in your zone. I said, I just got someone I want to tell you real quick. He was like, yeah, was, yeah of course, what's that? And I, he, and he go back to playing Pac-Man. So I know I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to be that nigga. But how many times do you get to have a one-on-one -on -one with Hov real quick? Right. So I said, I said, yo, man, it's still this one song, bro, that Clark can't play me in this basement. That that still blows my mind, bro. To this day, it's one of my favorite songs. I remember that shit verbatim, like, and I only heard it once. 
And I said, and this shit was called What's in the Name? And he stopped playing Pac-Man. And he looked at me. And he said, oh shit, you remember that? I said, nigga, I can't get it out of my head, nigga. He was like, yeah, that was a gem. I said, yo, does anybody have it? He was like, yo, I think he said it might be online or some shit. But he said, it's probably poor quality. He was like, but damn, that was, that was one of them ones. I said, yeah, nigga, it was. I said, well, nigga, good seeing you. You know what I'm saying? Stay up, my nigga. God bless and all that. And I left. You know what I'm right. saying? But for, for it to be damn near 25 years later, and that song still resonated with me. And when I said it, he lit up like, damn, like I do remember. Like I was in my bag on that joint. It was a good ass record, man. It was such a good song. That song was incredible, bro. And that was probably, you know, one of the only one on one like moments I ever had just with me and Jay was just in the same space and had an opportunity to, to have some words, but I never forgot it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then he just went back to playing Pac Man. I walked back out, went to my <laughs> session and shit. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. cool shit, man. So, so Reasonable Doubt, mm-hmm. like I said, now when the album came out, for me, you know, I'm an MC, right? I'm a rapper. I'm trying to come up with punchlines and bars and shit to make people say, ooh, and this and the third. So when Jay came out, I knew about him because we would run into each other at some of the same radio stations, uh, uh, Martin Moore and Stretch and Bobito and some of those college radio stations in New York because I was still doing that run. But um, I remember... I missed, because I wasn't in the streets, I won't know street dudes, so I was missing so many lines in them songs. I just fucked with the songs because the nigga was a dope ass rapper, and nigga was saying shit like I keep one eye open like CBS and all this shit. In, ni- in 90, I didn't know what the fuck a re-up was, and you know what I'm saying? I ain't know none of that shit then. Right. I knew niggas that hustled, but I-, I hadn't heard those terminologies yet. Right. So when I learned who he was really talking to in Reasonable Doubt, it made the whole album sound different because mm-hmm. he was talking to hustlers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Get, like niggas like get money, like I'm getting this money and this is a lifestyle that I'm attracted to. I know I shouldn't be doing this shit, but I'm still fucking paranoid about this shit. Mm-hmm. That was the first time I heard a nigga rap about some shit in, in that kind of detail where it's like, I don't really want to be doing this shit. But I just couldn't believe that he was that nice and he was still doing it. It's crazy, man, because I don't know who pulled him to the side because obviously, you know, when Jay was, when he was rhyming with us, he was on his fast flow. Yeah. But somebody pulled him to the side. Could have been Beehive, could have been somebody, Tata, somebody, and told him like, yo, you need to rap about, you know, your life, what you're going through. Because I had no idea when I first met him, that he was hustling. I didn't get exposed to that part of Jay until like maybe a year and a half after. I just remember going to VA and, and, and you know, he got this big ass house with all these vehicles and all of a sudden chains and, all, you know, crazy shit started coming out that I had no clue about. And it just made all the sense in the world when, you know, I heard a reasonable doubt and I heard how he just tamed his flow and he just got vivid, bruh. And it's like, you know, he was painting pictures with that shit. I don't know how he connected to it, but he just connected to that. Whatever that is as an MC, especially if you're storytelling and you're trying to, you know, convey that. And he just knew how to do that, man. And Hustles, you know, he definitely wrote the fucking playbook right there. Reasonable listen. Doubt is definitely the playbook for anybody who was hustling back then. You had to listen to the album to stay on point, really. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So many hidden gems and 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 double entendres and mm-hmm. thing and you know in, in those in those days you know those type of albums they get overlooked to a certain degree they don't get the you know the the the, the millions millions of sales there's not a lot of hype behind it but then later on mm-hmm. you at, over time they you appreciate what they were you know what I'm saying and what that really was like cuz it's almost like going back and looking at a documentary and you like yo I was around them times damn I missed all of that yeah. It's almost like a real life documentary. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. just just the way he crafted it. And y'all gave him the sound. Y'all gave him the soundtrack to be himself and make that shit make sense, man. And y'all made something special, bro. Like that nah. that album. Jeez. Appreciate it, man. Right. Appreciate man. it. 
I just wanted to get that out the way before we even dipped into your confession, man, because I'm a, you know, I'm a fan, man. Like, you know what I mean? So, so you 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 knock out. I remember you did you did reasonable doubt. Rock and Block Productions is is was your um your tagline at, t- at that time. And yeah, then you, you know come- what? When I was doing reasonable doubt, at the same time I did Uptown Saturday Night too, though. So, but nobody knew you was working on both of those at the same time. I mean, you know, Jay and Dame, but not the nobody else. Wow. Mm-hmm. So how did you come across Camp Low? Like, how did li- that even happen? I was living with this girl in the Bronx, and she knew Suede. You know, she introduced me to Suede when he was young, like 16. And, um, you know, he said he told me he wanted to rap. And so I took him to Clark Kent's house and made a demo with him. And, you know, the demo was I. Right. You know, he didn't have no idea of song structure. He didn't know when to stop at 16. You know, he was a baby. Mm-hmm. But uh, he kept with it. And what, maybe like a year later, he reconnected with me and he had Chiba with him. And when I heard them together, that's when I said, oh, these guys, they got something special. And I think they was calling themselves CeeLo at first. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? That name is dope, but that's like, it's too like um, regional. That's like a New York thing. Only New Yorkers play CeeLo. You need to come up with something else. Then they came back with Cam Lowe. When they did that, we started working. and. They was in my crib, and Jay would come. I would do shit for Jay, and Lowe would leave. You know, it was like a revolving door, and it was dope, man. You know, sometimes Jay would hit beats. He was like, yo, who's that for? Camp Lowe, and, you know, he'd be like, what the fuck? And then Camp Lowe hit some shit I did for Jay. Like, Camp Lowe heard politics and was mad. Like, yo, you get that nigga all the dope beats. So I had to redeem myself and make something sort of like politics, so I gave them Lucini. And when Jay heard that, he was like, yeah, that's crazy. You know what I mean? It was wild. Now, now I, I've always heard a rumor that Jay wanted Lucini, but you was like, you was like, nah, I can't hold. Like, nah, nah, he, nah, he nah, nah. He, he he never wanted Lucini, but he he loved the record. You know, he loved it because he didn't hear it until after I recorded it with low the vocals and everything. I didn't play him the beat and say, yo, check this out. If you would have heard that beat, you know, it might have been a problem. You feel me? But right. Um, after he heard it, he respected it. He loved it. You know, he said he wanted a beat like that, obviously, you know? Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nah, like that was, yeah, man, that was, that was a, an, an amazing record. It's still an amazing time. That record still go up to this day. You know what I'm saying? Um, the way you, the way you caught that, the way they flowed on it. And they were always like so eccentric and, and, and abstract with their rhymes. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, right. it sounded like they was, Fucking just pulling words from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? They, like they were true to form because they was like that in real life. When you met them, they dressed crazy. Oh, and oh, talk- nigga. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, hold on. before I <laughs> before you even go there, nigga. Uh-huh. I remember. I'll never forget Howard Homecoming. Right, I'm with Kid Capri. Mm-hmm. Kid Capri got a party, and the shit got shut down. And Kid Capri had a tour bus, so we outside. The tour bus, me, Kid Capri, my man Iron, who's super big fans of Camp Low, and Camp Low walk up. You know what I'm saying? Like they just, and it's the, it's kind of like the let out. So we just watching girls come out the club, right. cats trying to holler, trying to figure out where we gonna go to next. Is it the after hours or whatever, right? So I'm mm-hmm. standing there, Kid Capri is talking to the, both of them. They they was super cool at the time. And, you know, we kind of just figuring out what we're going to do. And I hear, I hear uh, the one, whoever it is, the key, two, Sonny Chiba. Chiba, yeah. Chiba looks at Kid Capri, looks at me, and he goes, all right, I'm about to split, Jack. And gave Kid Capri a five and gave me a five. And I'm like, yo, these niggas really on this 70s shit. Like it would like everything he said during that conversation was like 70s slang. Like, like I think he called somebody a job turkey. Like it was like real. And I'm like, oh, they really on this day. And nigga, they it's really. 1990 something. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, that I'm like, I could dig it. You know what I'm saying? Like I says, I say this. Like, I could dig it. That nigga said I'm about to split Jack. <laughs> and rolled out with a chick. And I was just like, hey, man, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, to live that shit. Like, 
They That's was really cheaper, living baby. that shit. Mm-hmm. And and they were they from New York or were they from uh Carolina? Yeah, from the Bronx. Or from the Bronx. They okay. both from, from the Bronx. The, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I can I can see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, nah, shout out to Camp Low, man. Y'all, y'all definitely made a classic too. You know what I'm saying? Like the a, a company with the videos, um, you know, they made sure that they was represented in the right way. I I re- like nigga, I remember watching Rap City at home. When the fucking video came on, and then Swing came on, Ooh. and fucking and ish, ish. Listen, bro, Sway is rapping, and fucking ish takes the mask off because Crazy. for that whole time, everybody was like, "Yo, they sound so much alike. They should do a song together." Like, yeah, this and the third. Like, who masterminded that? That was such a dope play to have them together. I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Well, I know Sway. You know, a big fan of Ish, and somehow he got in touch with Ish, and they did that record. But as far as the video, I don't know who put that together, but that was, was that was crazy. That was crazy, bro. That was bro. that was you had to be there. Like, what a time to be alive. Mm-hmm. That was a moment. Mm-hmm. That was such a fucking moment, man. They might have been the first fucking rap group to do some crazy shit like that. Yeah, back the back joints like that. Yeah, and then to like. To 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 link up with the person that everybody always wanted you to link up with, and it still never took nothing away from Camp Low and what right. they the the hook was dope, what they were saying was dope. Yeah, like I'm I'm from New York, the illest of all places, and then that shit just went off. I'm like, yo. And what's crazy is Ish and Suede is t- still best friends to this day, man. They still in constant uh, contact with each other. That's dope, man. That's off dope. that record, that's crazy. That's fly, man. Mm-hmm. So listen, all right. Well, listen, let's get into it, man. This is Hip Hop Confessions. You already know what it is. So yep. we going to go on records. You already know what it is. I need to know. Ski, Yeah. what is your hip hop confession? A hip hop confession, man. Well, listen, when I um first moved up top, when I first started my career before Jay-Z, before Rockefeller, before all that, I was uh, with these two guys that own the record label. And we moved to Jersey. Mm-hmm. and um. While we in Jersey, you know, they got an apartment. What which part of Jersey? Hold, uh, can't say that. Can't okay. say that. I, I can't get too much away. I don't want to, you right. know, because it's crazy. But anyhow, close close to the city. Right. Close to the city. Whole boat, so, um, some shit, Jersey City, some shit like that. You know that. what I'm saying? That type, that type vibe. So um, we, um, we, you know, we're in Jersey. They get an apartment. It's a small apartment, so three people can't stay there. So they got me staying in the studio, which is fine. You know, I'm a, I'm a studio rat, so it didn't mean anything. But while we in Jersey, you know, we meeting people in Jersey because, you know, we didn't know guys. So I meet this rapper from mm-hmm. Jersey who's super famous at the time, you know, and he lived right around the corner from the studio. So I'm hanging out with him almost every day. You know, he got a studio in his crib. I'm checking him out. And obviously, you know, me being around him, I'm meeting his management, his security, his dancers, his whole team. So I become cool with their whole little squad. And, you know, I'm the country boy from North Carolina that make right. beats, trying to get right. on. So, you know, they embrace me. Right. So I'm cool with them. So what? A couple of months go by. You know, I'm in the studio one night in the studio where I live, making a beat. I hear, the, you know, the bell. Got a, like, su- surveillance camera so I can see who's coming up. So I see his um, homie that's down with, you know, the rapper. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I know this kid, so I buzz him in. So he come up. I'm thinking he by himself. But when he come up, he got like two creepy looking people with him. You know what I'm saying? Two creepy oh, looking shit. goons with him. Right. And so I'm like, hmm, like instantly my energy is like, yo, what, what the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So I let him in. Give him a pound. What's good? See his boys. Give him a pound. What's good? I'm like, yo, hold on for a second. So I go into the back. Because I know I got to call my partners because I ain't trying to, you know, go out with a bang. And I just, and, you know, I ain't even started my career yet. Right. So I call, call my man. But while I'm going for the phone, in the reflection, I see one of the, you know, one of the creeps. You know, he got the Desi and he's like, you know, readjusting it in his waistline. Oh, I'm like, oh shit. shit. They got the pistol and everything. They're trying to rob me. Whatever. So, I, you know, I call my man like, yo, you need to get up here real quick. I think these niggas trying to bop, 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 bop. Hung up the phone. And mind you, he only lived like 15, you know, their apartment was like 15 minutes right. away. Right, right. All right, so the first thing I do, I got to get into full 
charismatic mode. I got to be, you know, I got to entertain these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm like, yo. So I walk in there. I'm like, what's up, my dude? Yo, have I seen you before? He's like, nah, homie. You ain't never seen me. I'm like, you don't rap? Nah, I don't rap. So I said, yo, check this beat out. So I played the beat. And he started nodding a little bit. And he started smiling because I know he liked that beat. And I'm like, right. yo, you don't rap. I said, yo, let's try some. I said, yo, go on the booth real quick and say this. So I had, I was entertaining these motherfuckers. Right. Had him, do, had him doing a hook. Had his homeboy saying, yo, what you think about that? He's like, yo, that sound dope. Then, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the security guy was looking at me like, this nigga is finessing us right, like, right in front of us. I'm right. like, nah, nigga. I'm going to hold y'all right here until my peoples come. Right. And, you know, lo and behold, I kept him entertained long enough. My man came up and everything was, was good. Then the next day, I saw the security guy, and I said, yo, bro, what was that all about? Man, it wasn't nothing personal, man. You know, we was just trying to, you know, you know, we, we, you know, it's hard out here. And I'm like, that's not even my studio. I don't even own this equipment. I'm just living there. I say, at least wait till I'm the fuck up out of there, man. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, but that, that was it. You know, it was kind of crazy, but I tap danced my, you know, my way out of that one. Out of a, out of a whole robbery. <laughs> whole robbery, kid. But Damn that's the music, man, the power of music, man. And back yeah, then, man. everybody wanted to get down. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure those two kids that was with the guy knew that, you know, he was doing security for this dude, and it was probably trying to get on forever anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it might have been one of those kind of proof. situations. Right. Yeah. Wow. But when I dropped that beat and he started nodding and smiling, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's, like, he's in the music. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> did, your, did your people show up? Like, oh, Yeah, yeah. Me? My people showed up and, you know, they was, you know, but they didn't press him. They just showed up like, yo, what's good? What's good? And it was just dead. Right. Uh, Show the energy. Niggas like, in now. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's wow. Man, yeah, though, like, shit, back in those days, man, like, listen, a come up was a come up. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like. Friend of foe, you, you the homie of the homie, like, yo, you fool, nigga. My nigga. You know what I'm like, saying? Please don't do not do this to me right now. Take all of this shit. It's not just, even mine. Right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Y'all already on camera. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Crazy. Damn, that's wild, man. Like, to be in those situations, like, yeah, I, I've been in those situations where your spidey sense just tingle. You're like, nah, something ain't right about this shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And thank God we come from a a culture where we have that. You know what I'm saying? Because some people just be in situations blindly and just ain't paying no fucking attention to nothing. And the next thing you know, they fool. Um, I always been one of those people, bro. Like, yo, bro, like, this shit feel funny to you up in here? Yeah, like, exactly. Yo, these niggas, <laughs> exactly. Yo, this, like, what's good with your man? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm-hmm. It's always an odd place to be in. You know what I'm saying? Did, so the beat that you played for the artist, did I mean for for the homie that was about to try to try to jukes you and shit? Did right. did that beat ever go anywhere? Did anybody ever get that beat? Oh nah 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 nah. Oh, okay, beat. like if you'd have told me like yeah that shit was on Camp Low album, it was da 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 da. I'd be like yo that's crazy. That would have been crazy, right? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got niggas in here. Try and do hooks that ain't that ain't rappers, real live <laughs> robbers and shit. That be saved by life, boy. Woo. <laughs> Maybe. Right, right. Now nah, I can mm. dig it, man. I can dig it. So, yo, I, uh, and another thing I want to ask you, I really wasn't tapped into what you was doing at uh at DD one seventy two. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? At the dojo, I I wasn't really up on that scene, but I know it was to uh, it was really important in, in a lot of music that came out today, like. Fill me in on that and like some of the stories that went down because like, a lot of people came out of that movement at DD one seventy two. Yeah, that was that was wild, man. That was um, I just, whew, I kind of went home. I went back to North Carolina for a few years, and then I came back to New York. And when I came back to New York, I connected with Dame. Right. And it was like, yo, I'm trying to do this thing. I, I think he had Black Rock at the time, where he mm-hmm. was like, you know, doing the thing with the um, the Black Keys. And he had like RZA and all these other people, you know, doing music, which was dope. Mm-hmm. And I went down to Brooklyn and I saw that go down live. And I'm like, yeah, this is kind of tight. And it was like, yo, you need to come fuck with me. You know, I got the the um, the um office in Tribeca. You can come through, bring your equipment. Let's make some music. And it was just mm-hmm. like that. So I just packed up my stuff, took it to Tribeca. Once again, living in another studio. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Packed it up. And what was crazy about the whole DD172 thing was... Everything was spur of the moment. It was never no like, okay, this week we're gonna work with most death, this week we're gonna work with yada yada yada. Everything it was, was more like Yeah. Like if most came and saw a name for a meeting, 
they would be like, hey, you know Ski's upstairs. You should go check him out. And then most will come upstairs. Yo, what up, Ski? I'm like, what's good? And they would say, yo, play that beat. And I'll play the beat. The next thing you know, most is sitting down writing a rhyme, and we got a song. Currency mm-hmm. come in, do the same thing. Gene Gray, J Electronica, everybody that came through, we just did everything on the spot, which was amazing. And then Dame was like a factory. Everything that we recorded that day, no mixing. Just record it, then shoot a video that same day. Then the next day, he'll put the video out. So it was like that. Oh, wow. For like, a, what, two, three years just doing that, man. And he was Damn. like, yo, we're going to have so much content, nobody's going to be able to keep up with us. And to this day, if you look at all of that creative control content they created, it was amazing. And it was an that's awesome time, a, that's man. Such I met a dope, so much- that's such a dope concept to have. Like, you know, I got this space where artists can come be themselves, producers can come be themselves, and instead of us worrying about the, the like the money and the, you know what I'm saying, what is going to happen, like, let's just put this content out yeah. and we all going to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. That's dope, because you never know who's going to come through them doors. You know, especially not, especially fucking with Dame, ain't no telling, that nigga knew everybody. Everybody came through from, from, from um, Mayweather to Zoe Kravis to Erica Badu, I, so many people walked in that door, man, that I was trying to create music for. I mean, even motherfuckers that didn't rap or sing, he was like, yo, say something on the record. Dane was like Don King and everything, kid. Right. Crazy. That's dope, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I always wonder what that, you know, what that, that process was, was like there. Because like you said, it was a lot of content and, y- and y'all were putting it out at a, at a super rapid pace. It was, it was like it was Woodstock. Quality. It, was, it was like Woodstock. It was like we was hippies. Because think about it. Dame, all he was doing... That's when Dane was really heavy. He was smoking. All he was doing was just having mad weed around, mad creative people from video directors to artists to engineers to um to art gallery people. It was like Woodstock, man. We was like hippies. Literally. We we right. never left that building. It was just always creative energy in that building, bro. It was amazing. That's You'd have loved that shit. You'd have had a ball. Yeah, nah, listen, I'm getting goosebumps just hearing about it. It definitely sounded like a place that, you know what I'm saying, would have would have made some real live shit. And y'all oh, yeah. did. Y'all yeah. made some classic shit. Wiz, I remember Wiz, Currency, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of shit came through there, bro. Mm-hmm. All right, well, well, all right. So before I let you get out of here, because I don't want to hold you, but I, because I never had nobody on on my podcast that was even around in, in this era, you know what I'm saying? But you were so close with Dane and Jay, you know what I'm saying? and you know what I'm saying? And big, you were there at the beginning of that shit. So how how did it feel, you know, you being a producer and being so close to it, how did it feel when you saw it all crumble? You know what I'm saying? When you saw them go their separate ways and the company went to, you know, it just wasn't what it was. And y'all were brotherhood, man. Like y'all, y'all were friends. It wasn't just like, yo, that's my man. We do business together. Y'all all came into the game getting money together. Getting credit, getting on, getting famous, getting getting to the bag. Like, how did it feel to watch that disintegrate in the in the way that it did? Hmm. Well, when all of that was going down, I was living in North Carolina, but me being in North Carolina didn't change anything because it definitely felt like, yo, it's impossible. I cannot see Dame and Jay not fucking with each other. You know what I mean? Because right. right. they was just super close, always together. And it hurt me, you know, because, you know, that, that Rockefeller legacy was, you know, was to this day. You already know what it is. Yeah. But I know how it is with family members. You know, I got certain family members I don't talk to, you know, because mm-hmm. time, you know what it does, man. I'm sure you got friends that you haven't spoke to in yeah. forever. Time just has a way of, you know, just doing what it does, man. But, you know, they both doing well, which is great. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, yeah. you know, Dame, obviously, he's happy. Jay, he's happy. They families, you know, everybody look beautiful and healthy. So yeah. it's all good. But, you know, we didn't want that to go down. We wanted Rockefeller to be forever, obviously. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is but, Rockefeller for life. Like, nigga, I, every yeah. time I hear Rel, Rel's, you know what I mean, record with Jay on it. Like, I, mm-hmm. you know, every time I hear that, because we play it a lot, I, I hear it and I'm like, damn, I hate that it, it went that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. And even with the, you know, with the... uh with Jay being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, when I was working on the uh the speech, the 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 rhyme that, that they did for him to show him. And when he got it, you know, and to see him, you know, shout Dame out, 
and say, you know, I, I can't take, I, I can't, I can't, I'd be remiss not to mention, you know what I'm saying, Damon Dash and, and what he did, you know what I'm saying, for this company. And, I ain't, like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, I almost, yo, when that, when he said that, I almost shed a tear, bro. My, yeah. I definitely got goosebumps and I, right. I felt that, you know, because, yeah. and Dame needed that. Dame needed to hear him say that because, yeah. come on, man, Dame, Dame was the mastermind, bro. Right. You know, Dame was the business. He was the visionary. He saw things nobody saw. Mm -hmm. And you got to have people like that around, man. So, mm -hmm. and what y'all, you know, what y'all created and what y'all made will, will stand the test of time, bro. Like y'all, y'all standing on a, a hell of a foundation in, in the hip hop. That window of, of Rockefeller Records is is a is a is a beautiful window that that open, you know, that open up a lot of doors for a lot of people. Shit, cats like me can only look back and, and wonder what that was like. You know what I'm saying? So for y'all to be a part of it and see it unfold like right in front of y'all, shit, man, I envy y'all for that. So, real talk, man. Yeah, man. Well, shit. Um, before we get out of here, man, I will listen. I wanted to say thank you. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you for pulling up the hip hop confession. If y'all don't know, you know what I'm saying? We are gonna recap it. Ski almost got robbed. By a famous rapper security guard. <laughs> that that nigga was just doing security and decided to try to stick my man up one day. Like Jersey too. So uh Tretch, Apache. I'm trying to think of the rappers from Jersey. But it's so many rappers from fucking Jersey. Red Man, Redhead Kingpin, the the Lords of the Underground, you know what I mean? Fucking well, the poor righteous teachers, well, they was in Trenton. So that wasn't even close, but yeah, I'm 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 gonna figure it out. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to <laughs> that. Right. But yo, before you roll, man, let them know what you got going on now, where they can catch you at on social media and all that. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, just follow me, man. All platforms, Ski Beats, S K I B E A T Z, and uh, you know, right now I'm just working with the the, the production community. You know, we got mm -hmm. the smoke packs, we got the smack packs. We're bringing all the young producers up. We're giving them a moment to shine. My page is all about them. I don't really post anything about myself. So if you go to my page, you're going to see a bunch of other motherfuckers doing their thing. And that's how I like it. So check me out. That's what it is, man. Listen, we appreciate you pulling up, bro. Thank you so much. It's been good to chop it up with you. And just good to see you, man. You're looking good. You're looking healthy, man. I love to see that in 2022, man. My For man, sure. you too, baby. Already, man. Listen, this has been Hip Hop Confessions with my man Ski. You already know what it is because everybody got one. Peace. Here's a little story that must be told. And it goes a little something like this. this, this.